What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to break down the different types of software used in today's workplace environments. We'll cover productivity software, collaboration software, instant messaging software, web browsing software, and remote support software. Now, understanding these tools and how they're used is essential for anyone preparing to enter or advance in the tech industry. So without further ado, let's get into it. Our first category is productivity software, and these tools help individuals and businesses perform tasks more efficiently. So let's take a closer look at the different types of productivity software. The first one we have is called word processing software. So word processing software is essential for creating, editing, and formatting text documents. And the most well-known example is Microsoft Word, but there were others like Google Docs and Apple Pages. And the purpose of word processing software is it's used to create documents like letters, reports and essays, and it provides tools for formatting text, inserting images, tables, and other media, and checking spelling and grammar. In the proper use, word processing software should be used when you need to produce formal text documents. Be mindful of using templates for consistent formatting and styles of professional documents. And when collaborating, tools like Google Docs offer real-time editing features, allowing multiple users to work on the same document simultaneously. Next, we have what is called spreadsheet software. So spreadsheet software like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, this is designed to store, organize, and analyze data in a grid format or rows and columns. And the purpose is used for tasks like budgeting, data analysis, and tracking projects. And it allows users to perform calculations using formulas and functions, create charts, and analyze data trends. And its proper use is best used when dealing with numerical data or data that needs to be organized into tables and it uses built-in formulas and pivot tables to analyze large data sets effectively in charts and graphs they can help visualize data trends for reports and presentations next we have what is called presentation software such as microsoft powerpoint or google slides and it is used to create visual presentations for meetings lectures or reports and the purpose is designed to convey information visually through slideshows that include text images and multimedia and it's often used in professional settings for business meetings educational seminars and conferences in its proper use you would use the presentation software where you need to present information in a structured visual format and it focuses on simplicity in slide design, ensuring each slide contains only key points and visuals that enhance your message. And it takes advantage of templates, animations, and transitions to make the presentation more engaging. And then we have what is called visual diagramming software. So visual diagramming software like Microsoft Visio and Lucid Chart. This allows users to create flow charts, network diagrams, and organizational charts. And its purpose is it is ideal for illustrating processes, workflows, system architecture, and organizational structures. And is often used by engineers, network administration, and project managers to visualize complex concepts. In its proper use, it uses visual diagramming tools to simplify and explain complicated ideas through visual representation and to make sure as your diagrams are clear and easy to interpret by using proper symbols and labels and it leverages these tools in brainstorming sessions project planning and technical documentation all right, next, let's talk about collaboration software. So collaboration software has become essential in modern workplaces, especially with the rise of remote and hybrid work. So let's explore different types of collaboration software. And the first type is called email client software. So email clients such as Microsoft Outlook, Gmail, or Mozilla Thunderbird are applications used to send, receive, and manage email communications. And the purpose is used for professional and personal communication, and it offers features like scheduling emails, organizing emails into folders, and managing contacts. In its proper use, email clients should be used to send formal communications, especially in business settings. And it uses features like folders and tags to organize your inbox and set up filters to automate certain tasks like categorizing emails. And also, email etiquette is critical, so ensure you are professional and concise and avoid using email for urgent or informal conversations. 
Next, we have what is called conferencing software. So video conferencing software such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, or Cisco WebEx, they are used for virtual meetings. And the purpose, it facilitates face-to-face -face meetings and communications over the internet and is used for remote work, visual presentations, webinars, and online training sessions. In the proper use, you want to use conferencing software when you need to conduct meetings with participants in different locations. You want to make sure you test your audio and video sessions settings before meetings and use screen sharing features to present content during the meeting. And in professional environments, you want to ensure meetings are scheduled, and that there's a clear agenda to avoid wasting time. Next, we have online workspace software. So online workspace software like Microsoft Teams, Slack, or Google Workspace, they provide a virtual hub where teams can collaborate on projects in real time. And the purpose, it helps teams stay organized by offering chat features, file sharing, task management, and integration with other productivity tools. And it allows tools to work on projects together, even when not in the same physical location. In the proper use, use these platforms to centralize communication, especially for teams working on the same project. You organize your workspace by creating channels or folders dedicated to different topics or teams, and you take advantage of integrations with third-party apps such as calendars and task management tools to streamline workflows. And then we have what is called document sharing software. So document sharing software such as Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive, they allow users to share and collaborate on documents in real time. And its purpose, it's used for file storage and sharing, enabling multiple users to access, edit, and collaborate on documents simultaneously. And it provides version control, ensuring users can see changes made by others and revert to previous versions if needed. In its proper use, you use document sharing tools to collaborate on documents, especially when multiple stakeholders need to contribute, and it takes advantage of version history and commenting features to track changes and provide feedback. And it also ensures files are organized and appropriately named to avoid confusion, and you can set permissions carefully to control who has access to the information. All right, next, let's talk about instant messaging software. So instant messaging software is designed for real-time text-based communication. And examples include Microsoft Teams chat, Slack, and WhatsApp. And its purpose is used for quick, informal communication between colleagues or team members. And it's often used in place of email for internal conversations, especially for questions and updates that require a fast response. In its proper use, you want to use instant messaging software for short, immediate communications rather than for formal discussions or detailed project updates and you want to keep messages concise and make use of status indicators to communicate your availability to others and you want to avoid using instant messaging for sensitive or confidential information unless you're using a secure platform so instant messaging software is useful in both workplace and personal settings enhancing communication speed and accessibility all right, next let's talk about web browsing software. So web browsers, they are essential tools for accessing the internet and examples include Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft Edge, and Safari. In its purpose, it's used to navigate the web, allowing users to access websites, online services, and web applications. And it provides the platform for tasks ranging from research to online shopping, streaming, and much more. In its proper use, you wanna use web browsers for accessing online content, whether whether it's research, web-based applications, or entertainment. And you want to be aware of privacy and security concerns when using web browsers. So use features like incognito mode or private browsing to prevent tracking. And you want to keep your browser and extensions up to date to protect against security vulnerabilities. So web browsers, they are fundamental to almost every computer-based activity and offering access to a wide range of resources and services. And lastly, we have remote support software. So remote support tools such as TeamViewer, AnyDesk, and Remote Desktop, these enable technicians to access and control computers remotely. And the purpose, they are used by IT support teams to troubleshoot and resolve issues without needing to be physically present at the affected machine and allows remote access for software installation, configuration, and troubleshooting. In its proper use, you want to use remote support software to assist users in solving 
technical problems or performing maintenance tasks, then you want to ensure that remote access is secure using encryption and strong authentication methods to protect sensitive information. And you always want to seek permission from the end user before accessing their system remotely. So remote support software, this is crucial for modern IT support teams, and it enables them to provide assistance efficiently regardless of the physical location of the device. So in conclusion, software tools, they play a critical role in the modern workplace from boosting productivity to facilitating collaboration and communication in each category of software, such as productivity, collaboration, instant messaging, web browsing, and remote support. They have their own purpose and proper use. So understanding these tools and how they fit into a professional environment is essential for passing the CompTIA Tech Plus exam and for succeeding in today's technology driven world. Now, with all that being said, let's do some of this check on learning. So what is the primary use of spreadsheet software? Is it for creating and editing text documents? Is it for storing and managing files? Is it for analyzing and organizing numerical data? Or is it for conducting video conferences? And the correct answer is it is for analyzing and organizing numerical data. So spreadsheet software is designed primarily for handling numerical data and performing calculations. It allows users to create tables, graphs, and formulas to analyze information efficiently. Next question, which of the following is a key feature of collaboration software? Is it enabling real-time editing and sharing of documents? Is it sending messages via chat in real time? Is it allowing users to browse websites or is it creating visual diagrams for projects? And the correct answer would be it enables real time editing and sharing of documents. So collaboration software like online workspaces and document sharing tools allow multiple users to work together on documents in real time. And our final question, which software will be most appropriate for remotely troubleshooting and fixing a client's computer issues? Would it be instant messaging software, remote support software, presentation software, or spreadsheet software? And of course, the answer is remote support software. So remote support software is specifically designed to allow technicians to access and troubleshoot a user's computer from a different location. 